Cheers! Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, Movie Bitches. Bitches. Retro Review episode 65. Tonight we're reviewing Ginger Snaps. Is it like ginger, comma, snaps? Is that the intention? I think there's a lot of fun reasons Layers. why they named this yeah. that. Yes, yes. Numerous, it worked on numerous levels. We'll get into it. Yeah. But first things first, this episode is dedicated to Sophie. Our Lady Catherine de Berg. Lady Catherine de Berg, who requested this on Patreon. So thank you, Sophie, for your support. I am sorry that it took a long time but we wanted to do it for Halloween, and I think, you know, hopefully it'll be worth the wait. Shout out to the rest of our Patreon supporters. $5 a month gets you early access. $10 gets you access to our viewing parties. Uh, lots of fun stuff coming up, including Twilight. Tober. Twilight Tober. <laughs> ah! Sorry. Oh, it really came out of nowhere. Oh. Nice. Oh my god. <laughs> Me too. Are you crashing the prom or something? Did you come today? I'm so scared of that way. No. It's so scary. Uh, Shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink. Go to trywink.com slash moviebitches and you get $22 off your first month of wine. Great gift to give for Christmas or the holidays Halloween. that are coming up. Or for Halloween. Get some Cabernet up in here. Ooh, yes. This mm. blood red Cabernet Franc. Mm. Mm. Actually, I think this is a petite sirop, but anyway. Orange wine. Orange wine for mm -hmm. Halloween. Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they have that on Wink anymore. They, okay. they dabbled and then they stopped. Subscribe, click that button, click the little bell, click the thumbs up, share, poll, oh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, post. Comment. Yeah, did you, did you like this movie? Do you want, do you have feelings about it? Do you want to share to the world? Do you want us to review the multiple sequels? Are there sequels and to the this? TV show that was just announced? What? <laughs> we'll get into it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Tonight we're reviewing Ginger Saps yes. from 2000, the cult classic from Canada. Yeah. I wanted to get some alliteration in there. A, a cult classic from Canada, cult Canadian classic. There you go. I was like, oh wow, they're really just like not hiding that this is Canada. Like, are they going to address it? Oh, they, they, it's Canada. Oh, uh, sorry about before, I was just afraid someone would hear us. Yeah, well, yeah, usually uh, they're yeah. trying, oh, they're, it's like this the, is, um, the Hallmark hmm, movies. It's where Chicago. It's, yeah. This is in no way Toronto. I don't have an accent. This uh, what, doesn't I don't look know what like you're talking about. Winnipeg you know? at yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> Very that. So, yes, if you haven't seen Ginger Snaps, I would say, for the most part, I would say I recommend it. Um, I haven't seen this movie, gosh, in. 15 years or something, wow. but I remember when I first saw it, it was such a refreshing horror movie. I was sure. so excited. It had so many more things going on than it seemed. I thought it was just going to be some crappy, you know, right. like TV horror movie or whatever. And I yeah. was like, oh, they put that list. there's some stuff going on. There are layers to this nice movie that I really did appreciate. Oh, okay. So I just remember being like, very surprised at how good it was yeah. um, because no one had heard of it, right? And that's sort of what it became this cult movie once right. uh, it came out on, I think it was still on DVDs at that point. I don't, oh, think, sure. I don't think it was streaming. Oh, in 2000? I mean, it might have been VHS. <laughs> I had it on DVD. I think I rented it on DVD. Okay, that makes sense. It was a, it was a word of mouth movie. It was like, oh, have you seen? Oh, you haven't seen? Oh, it's so, oh, it's so different and cool and whatever. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I would say I recommend it. It's definitely pretty gross. There's yeah. a lot of horror elements. Uh, trigger warning or spoilers there are fake dead dog carcasses yes uh, and you see a lot of them a lot of them so if that's something you don't actually see any dogs killed no you just see their remains right um, or so you know the if, stuffed animal I ain't have a heart uh, I need medical attention your knife is in my dog. I'm sorry, man. I got nothing against your dog. Like, it was not particularly... I think they knew. Yes. I think they were they like, were like we, we don't want any calls too... from PETA. Well, we can't make this too realistic or we're going to lose the audience. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? True. True. Yes. And actually, thank you, Sophie. Unfortunately, I forgot about your warning. So the, the viewing party started and I was like... <gasps> So if that's something you can't handle, don't watch this movie. Yes. I mean, it was um, not my kind of movie. Mm -mm. I still enjoyed a lot about it. There were a lot of times for me where I was like, mm -mm, this is too unpleasant. Like, I don't know. That's 
to um, no. Mm. But if you were in the right mood, or it was like, ooh, it's Halloween, ooh, I'm getting spooky, or if that doesn't bother you as much, like, I'm more sensitive than I think a lot of our audience probably is. Perhaps, perhaps. I kind of want to show you a Frank Henlauter movie, but I feel like it would be a bad idea. All I remember is feeling something sticky in my pants and then finding them covered in blood. And not my blood. The blood came from a girl whose brains I sucked out. You sucked out her brains? Yeah, right through her mouth. Is she dead? Of course she's dead. What, are you kidding? I don't think it would be good. I don't know. See, it's so hard for yeah. me because sometimes it doesn't his, bother me his at all. Because so, um, so out there and over the top, it might be all right. Right. But you might also be upset. Maybe. <laughs> Uh-oh, Brian. Now you're really losing your mind. <laughs> It's yeah. hard to know. I'm yeah. just a sensitive this soul. One, this one lingered. This was a real... Yes. Okay, so, so Ginger Snaps about two... Uh, sisters. 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 Who are... They were never such... De well, they weren't as devoted as maybe she thought. Well, yes. Well, they were pretty devoted. They pretty had devoted. a suicide pact. Well, right, but... That they almost nearly... Um, that's what I'm saying. Sure. Almost nearly almost doesn't nearly. quite cut it, does it? Sure. They were closer than Vera Ellen and Rosemary Clooney. Let's sure. say yeah. that. <laughs> Lord help the mister who comes between me and my sister. Um, and they are obsessed with death and suicide. And they're very yeah. Winona Ryder all yep. through the 80s and 90s. Um, it was yep. very Lydia. A little but, Wednesday adams -y too. Just yeah. like in that like macabre, you know. Well, but somehow I feel like in this one, it felt angsty, over the top, just performative, yeah. like, we're depressed, we smoke in gym class. Like, it was just something that was so fake about it, and I don't know if that's because of, like, my age at this moment, where I was looking back like, oh my god, high school. Or if it was put on purpose. I think both. Baxter's fertilizer. And everyone's just standing there, like, staring. I think because it helps them to reveal what I really appreciated about this movie was all of the allegory. Right. You know, and so... And so at its core, Ginger Snaps is a werewolf movie. It is a werewolf movie, but it also is a coming-of-age movie. Yes. Um, In all the, all the ways that that happened. Yes. <laughs> I think that there, it, through a certain lens that you could say that there's a, there's a trans story here, too, in, like, the idea of becoming a woman or something necessarily that you don't want to become. Mm. You know, when she's tucking her tail and trying to hide something about herself that she sure. doesn't like. Sure. There's a lot of visuals and also like being outcast from, from the school or whatever. Yeah. And then things change and now all of a sudden she fits in and maybe I, maybe I didn't care as much about that. Maybe I like this. You're doing drugs with guys. Something is definitely wrong with you. No, maybe you're right. Maybe I do see a monster. Yeah, it's got these little green eyes. Oh yeah, like I really wish I was hemorrhaging and hairy and sucking off Jason McCarty. Well, you always wanted to be me. You're doing drugs with guys. Something's definitely wrong with you. God. You know, like... <laughs> oh, God. There's some really good lines of just like, oh no, something's wrong. You're... Well, the tone... I wouldn't say this movie is, is like perfect, mm -hmm. but it handles tone very well. There's scenes that are truly horrifying and there's scenes that are truly... Truly, black comedy, yes. satire. There's scenes that are campy. Like, is yeah. I feel like this was from the first script or something. When other guy, blonde guy that she essentially gives the werewolf STD to. Yes. All of his scenes, I was like, this is a different film. I'm up to some whack shit right now. I'm way out on the corner, fucked up and evil. You want to know what I did for fun last night, huh? I killed my own freaking dog, okay? And what am I supposed to do about that, huh? I don't know. I meant to look it up and I forgot and we could probably still do it, but he seems so familiar and I, think I don't he was know. he just that guy. Maybe. Or I might hair. know him from like a Disney Channel original movie. I wouldn't be surprised. And I didn't know then if it was like he's giving me Disney Channel vibes. I think vibes, so. Or if it was literally that. I was like, what is this Halloween Town? What's but it happening? really, it felt like, oh! <gasps> 
Is he in Halloween Town? Because if that's the truth. He might. We have to look it up. Okay. Jesse Moss was in Tucker and, and Dale. Oh, that was a fun one. I don't think I, that's what I remember him from. Final Destination 3. Oh, wow. A series of Hallmark Christmas films. Oh, that might be it, too. And there was, well, that's the Canadian, too, right? I bet. Yeah, quite a few Hallmark Christmas <laughs> films. I gotta get, I gotta get back, back, back to, to the, the early, early 2000s. 2000s. Good for him. Good for you, Miss Jess. Worker. Jesse, good for you. He was in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the TV show. Okay. Oh, my God. He was in... He was in Gold Diggers? The Secret of Bear Mountain? Oh my god! The Secret of Bear Mountain! Were you also obsessed with that movie? I mean, a little bit, yes. I feel like the lesbian overtones of that film were straight over my head, but if I watched it now, I'd be like, ho oh, ho ho <laughs> My god, he has been acting since 1991, and he was wow. born in 1983. Wow, good for him. So good for you, Jess Moss, Jesse, Jesse Moss. Jesse Moss. Either way, we can put up the picture of the love interest from Halloween Town, and they'll be very was, similar. It was that hair. It was the hair, early 2000s. Well, this um, also felt like a vestige of 90s movies, right? Sure. It felt like Jawbreaker. Yeah. It felt like, felt well, Heather's, Heather's is 80s, well, but she... like it felt like sort of that tail end of teenage black comedies yeah. that, that were going and going and going. There was definitely like moments that felt like the craft. Yep. You know, that kind of stuff. Yes, it's a very similar vibes of like, oh, we're sisters and we're witchy, like, you know, or whatever. It's like, yes. we're gonna be different and we're gonna be performatively different. This is referencing like all kinds of things. Obviously werewolf movies in general always have that sort of the beast within allegory right. of, you know, I, uh, what's happening to my own body and, and I'm becoming animalistic and more, you know, all these things, everything's heightened, you know, so that's always there. Right. But this movie takes it a step further, let's say. And, you think? Well, I don't think I've seen a werewolf, well, a werewolf movie that, um... That talks about periods? I don't think, I don't think I've seen a movie that talks about periods as much as this movie. Sure. It was very refreshing. It was I'll be really honest. quite refreshing. I was like, you know what? I am, and it's not just because <laughs> I was currently going through some PMS myself. I was like, I am interested in this topic. <laughs> Are you sure it's just cramps? Just so you know, the words just and cramps, they don't go together. Thank you. Thank you. Interested. Hmm. <laughs> but yes, there's lots of talk of like her body betraying her, yeah. you know, like she's changing, she doesn't want to, you know, when you're hormone, you do, you do feel like there's some monster and you're like, I'm fat and I'm awful and blah, and what's, there's hair everywhere. There's hair, you're right. What's I love, I really did love that scene with the nurse. The, that felt so like um, Brady Bunch. So Jan, what can I help you with? Teen pregnancy, uh, bulimia, uh, suicidal tendencies? No. It's my stupid glasses. <laughs> sure. Like RuPaul, like, or like, but I'm a cheerleader. Like right. those scenes felt so pointedly comedic. A thick, syrupy, voluminous discharge is not uncommon. Expected every 28 days, give or take, for the next 30 years. Ugh, great. And all the stuff with Mimi Rogers, yeah. the oh mom my God. who yes. I'm obsessed with. She also kind of gave me Aunt Martha vibes. Like mm -hmm. just in a little bit of like that acting of like, mm -hmm. oh, it was like a little extra. Uh -huh. Probably higher level, to be honest, not to put anything down on dear Aunt Martha. I don't know if Aunt Martha was acting. I think that was just... I love it. It just came out of her. I love it. But it um, exuded. But I really did love... I actually loved the character of the mom, too, where I'm kind of just like, Obsessed you know what? with her. She's kind of great. She's so great. All of her little, um, like... Handmade crafting tiara scrunchies. Yeah. Thank God she's so into crafting. With we the, should have worn a crafty bitch shirt because she's such a crafter and it saved the day. That crafting sort of. did sort of save the day. We'll get into the science. Yeah. yeah. I want to talk a lot about the love interest. Yep. And the quick drug making montage. Oh, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. So, yes. Yeah, so, Ginger and Bridget are as close as can be. Yeah. They're, you know, living in a 
penitentiary? I um, was so confused by the room. I didn't know what was going on. They're in the basement. They're literally in prison beds. And it's just like cement <laughs> walls. Life I was like, what is happening? And then when, she's, when they're running around at the end in the, like, the basement yes. trying to... I was like, I am so confused by the layout of this house. Or it's of this basement. Expansive. expansive. And yet, expansive. I'm like, where did this room come from? It was wild. But they are, yes, as close as close can be. They're doing their best to Harold and Maude. They're faking all these suicide yeah. attempts and they're obsessed with death. Too much blood. And I can see you're gaunch. Just do it. It felt like in the same way that you can tell that Pet Cemetery is directed by a woman or there's like female influence. Mm. This is directed by a man, but it was written by a woman. That sort of campy, uh, it felt like teeth in a way, like the, the, with the way we zoom into this town and like what's really going on in this town. Sure. There was there I was, was so vibes. confused by this town where it's like, oh, another dead dog. I Let's go back wish, to our hockey game. Like what? I almost wish it had gone slightly further somehow with that because it, I found it funny, but I wanted them to push it It was it even kind more. of funny. By the end, I was just like, well, this is absurd. Like, this like is they're like, crazy. oh, they got another one. Oh, oh, wow. Beast of Bailey Down strikes again. That's four dogs this week. <laughs> Whoa, bonus. I guess you're DOA on a dog, huh, Fitzface? That's enough. Are you okay? Terrific. So basically there's like an, a wild animal, it's a werewolf, running right. around killing all the dogs in the neighborhood. And it's so frequent at this point that yeah. they're like tripping over them in gym class. Yeah. And they're, they're, just right, like, they're just like, oh, oh we're playing lacrosse. Another. Oh God, another dead dog on the field that no one noticed. I was like, what? Jeez, another one. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> it was so blasé. And that did make it like easier to let it go, Cal sort of. Palatable. It still was like upsetting, but you know. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> another one. Oh. Oh my God. Oh, here's a towel for the blood. Like what? Well, I think that was part of that was like Bridget's, you know, Ginger has, Ginger's the older sister. She has such an influence over Bridget. Oh, yeah. Bridget does whatever Ginger wants, all that stuff. Oh, I'm so obsessed with death and, and suicide. I'm so tough and all this stuff. And right. then, you know, gradually they are faced with the actuality of death and all of these violent things happening to them. It's like, oh, oh no, oh no, I I'm. I think I'm not as tough as I thought yeah. I was in this suburban Canadian town right, or right, whatever, right. you know? I guess I'm a little bit more squeamish. And I, I almost wish they had played with that a little yeah. um, somehow. Maybe. maybe in the show, so. Right, so there's two sequels. They filmed them back to back. Okay. Ginger Snaps 2 Unleashed, which apparently is um, Bridget is now a werewolf and is... So she didn't use the the dirty needle. I haven't seen them. I kind of read the br a briefest of synopses, so correct me if I'm wrong. And then the third one, they somehow they went back in time. Oh, no. Ginger snaps back the oh. beginning. So it's huh. like pre... I don't know. I didn't watch it. I just looked. I, oh, there's two sequels? I didn't know. So, Interesting. Um, are they good? Should I watch them? Let me know. And then as, as recent as 2020 or 2021, they announced... One of the Killing Eve producers, I think, is like developing a series. Interesting. I don't know how you sustain... I think you could. I think if you maybe did it... Uh, like, you'd well, have to how, play with the tone. How long once they get... Like, does she get bitten in the first episode? Right. How long does it then take her to turn into a werewolf? Is she as bloodthirsty? How do you sustain that? You know what I mean? I think I would almost go a little bit more Sabrina the Teenage Witch with it. Oh my God, I'd watch the shit out and of it. And it's like every month, she turns into a werewolf. Oh man. Well, oh, is it that time of the month again? We get a you lot of in-depth period talk. I mean... I would watch it. I think you, I could, you, could, it. you could find a way to make that work. It's like Hannah Montana, but her alter ego is werewolf. Werewolf. I'd watch it. It's darker, right? It's, it's yeah, a, yeah. A, a darker comedy. I mean, they managed to like sustain Oz's uh, storyline in Buffy for quite a... Oh, Seth Green was, oh, spoiler alert, a werewolf on Buffy, Buffy the Vampire. So, <gasps> Why is it always vampires and, and werewolves? I think they're... Together. Uh, they're... They're just... It's, if there's one, there's the other. Well, I don't know if this is true in when... But I do think somehow they became sort of opposites and right. or yes. mortal enemies. I don't know if that's they just the Twilight, the Twilight movies talking. And, and True Blood. <laughs> so maybe that's like a historical thing. Like, I, you know, whatever. Like, or it just became a thing. I have no idea. I'm not sure. Remember that Benicio Del Toro werewolf movie? No. The Wolfman? 
Oh. And it was like, I think we saw it together. It what? Was like, it was like pretty good from my recollection. Maybe the we did. Wolfman together? They remade The Wolfman. Okay. Like within the last 15 years, okay. 20 years. Okay. Benicio Del Toro. And Anthony Hopkins was someone. I don't it. think we saw this together. And Danny Elfman did the music. No. Oh. I remember it being not bad. Okay. This did make me want to rewatch both American Werewolf in London, obviously. And my favorite werewolf movie, The Howling. Okay. Which I love. I feel like I've heard you mention that it's before. So good. Really. I don't think I like werewolves. Like, it just doesn't do it for me. No, he doesn't do it for me. Does and the, I think that's the... why this was more interesting, because at least it was doing something on top of that, you know? Oh, yeah, it had a lot going on. And I really appreciate it, so I'm sure to save money. But also, like, um, it worked for the story. She's transforming slowly throughout. Slowly, it's yeah. not just, uh -huh, that one. Right, you she's know, marking werewolf. down until the full moon on Halloween. Exactly. And the subtle, like, okay, first it's just the nails. Yep. And then that sort of, like, little cat eye thing they yes. put in. Yeah. And the teeth are just a little different. Yep. And like, it's just, like, it's a gradual. Oh, the little marks that she got cut on. Now there's hair growing out of them. Mm -hmm. and, then... and so, you know, they prolong the transformation throughout the whole movie there really was though like that scene with the guidance counselor or whatever the nurse where mm -hmm. it was like oh what about like hair though in different places yeah that's yeah, just that's part a, of it mm -hmm, yeah yeah <laughs> expect it for once a month for, for the, the 30 next 30 years, years. Mm. i loved her and i really loved movie rogers trying to talk to them about boys and oh my god all of her various sweaters yes and the bloody cake she made oh it's ginger's oh, favorite it's ginger's favorite <laughs> blood going everywhere just like oh my god it's corn syrup dad god mm. Mm. you want some yeah you don't get a lot of horror movies from a female perspective or with main female characters and it's doing a lot of things intentionally obviously but remember when i think after she kills the is it the science teacher or that the teacher i mean that that set is comical in a way like it was right. just like blood prints and <laughs> yeah. smearing and you don't see any of it so it's like funny right. you're like right. oh my god how did we get here <laughs> what happened this yeah. is crazy and she says you know like or maybe it's when they kill the other teenager or whatever but basically ginger is like no one ever thinks chicks do shit like this trust me a girl you can only be a slut a bitch tease or the virgin next door They'll right. never even suspect us. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. And I was like, mm, that's yeah. really interesting. Like the the things that are weaved in uh, are making very strong and intentional commentaries. And, yes. I, and I thought that was really interesting. I, I, I agree. I really like there was a lot of value in the dialogue that was being had mm -hmm. either literally as text or the subtext right. that was not particularly thinly veiled. Which is fine. Yes, you know, it was very it, much like her period is the werewolf. <laughs> right, it's not hard to put the puzzle pieces together. But I mean, that that scene where she gets bitten is harrowing. Yes. She gets her first period suddenly. Yeah. And of course, that attracts the the monster. And I mean, it's almost played like a rape scene. Like it well, was honestly very um, upsetting. I mean, obviously, but like it was. It was graphic. That was the scariest scene. It was. And there was also an interesting line later, too, about Sam, the drug dealer, that we'll, we'll get to him. I, wanted, I, I have so many things I want to talk about Sam about. Yeah. He's he, also in a different movie from a different decade, and I can't wait. He also kind of looks like... Um, He's got that hair. It, that hair. It's the other hair, but it's, it's the that other hair. hair. He has the hair from what's his fucking... Um, Brink. Oh, Brink. Yes. And um, what's the one with Lindsay Lohan at Freaky Friday? Um, what's his name? That was Chad Michael Murray. Chad Michael Murray. He had different hair. He well, it was different, but No, it similar. was the guy from... It from, was definitely Brink. Yes, it was, the, it was the haircut from Brink. Oh, my God. Famously, the haircut from Brink. Brink. <laughs> Throwing it back. So, quick and most break, and we'll be back with a lot more blood. <laughs> blood. 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 Speaking of school, yeah, I was obsessed with their little bone pens. Oh my god, yes, and they're like bird skull necklaces or whatever. Right, I don't know yeah, what it was exactly, yeah, but it was some yeah. skull. It was like a little bird, bird, bird beak. And the bone pens, I mean, they were so over the top. Of course. They were so over but the I top. But I also love that, that that's like, you know, it's like, oh, well, I'm goth. So my Lisa Frank planner is black. You know, like it's that kind of thing where it's like, oh, I still have my trapper keeper, but it's of all black. I love when they presented their suicide montage and the teacher was just like, 
Oh, oh yeah. no. I'm upset. Yeah, this I is not have a conversation. You put in a lot of work. That's good. But I don't. Oh, no. Like he was like, I don't know what to do with this. And I've so been in that situation with teachers where they're like, I got this. Ah, and you're just like, I'm just expressing my art. Yeah. But it's, it's, we've been talking for a while about this movie and we have not mentioned Bridget's horrific wig. Oh, yeah. Oh boy. I didn't remember this being as bad as it was. <laughs> it's rough. That's all I'll say. It's really bad in every scene and always looks terrible and is very bad. And I was like, it was so obvious at some point I was like, she's just gonna take that wig off. <laughs> What's under there? How bad was her Regular, real hair like, yeah. that they needed to stick her in this awful wig? Were they trying to like dump down, dumpy down? I think that's what it was, was yeah. that it was like, oh no, like look, she's she's dumpy. She can't right. do Bridget's her hair gross. right. And, yeah. Right, right. Oh, Ginger's the sexy one because now she's, you know, a woman, a woman. A woman. A woman. That's it, yeah. A woman. <laughs> You're the only one that can get my tits popping. Now, if Henrietta had shown up in this movie, I mean, I always want Henrietta yeah. to show up in every movie. Absolutely. Oh, right. So, so speaking of the first attack scene, I remember at the time and now still, uh, one of the things I so appreciated about this movie was all the practical effects. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons it's really stood the test of time and held up. Because early, early 2000, woof. If you I were mean, to do CGI, woof, it would you know, have been real rough. We've seen Scorpion a, King. American Werewolf in Paris. It's, it's not, don't do it. Okay. It's, um, awful and it looks hilarious okay. and you know of course there's some seams here and there this isn't the most amazing special effects i've ever seen but they're so tactile and real and yeah. and it makes it so much more horrific and i just really think that people should do more practical effects and i also thought that like the last scene of her it's great yeah the design was really interesting upsetting yes and creepy it that... was kind of like roman wolf -y, mm -hmm. like a mother wolf with like the teat and she's gonna raise them yes on the you know it was like yes. very that romulus and romulus remus. and remus it was very it's a lot of layers to ginger snaps yeah turns out. yeah no that scene where she first gets attacked was also really giving me dracula when well because in in bram stoker's dracula the francis Ford coppola movie i have not read the the book so I oh. don't know for sure but in Bram Stoker's Dracula he turns into a wolf I've never seen it great um they like have a vigorous wolf bestiality sex on an altar and it's like oh. but it reminded me of that but but then but he turns into a wolf so maybe there's like wolf vampire there's gotta be some wolf vampire blood I should have looked it up I'm sure there's like been dissertations written about Right, because I don't know where... The history of wolves and vampires I don't know where the, culture. you know, like Bram Stoker's Dracula, obviously, you know, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Right. What's Wolfman? You know, werewolves. I mean, I, they're probably even ancienter. Like, they must be ancient, ancient. I'm sure there's got to be some sort of... Mm -hmm. I don't think there's, like, a text. Where does that stem from, I wonder? <laughs> We should look into it. Yeah. Comment down below. Do you know about werewolves? Because I want to know more. Yeah, now tell I'm, us, I'm quite tell intrigued. Us more. I only know about pop culture werewolves. Are you a doctor in werewolfology? Please. <laughs> share in the comments. Lycan. Lycan Thorpe. Thorpe. Lycan Thorpe. Yeah. And I know about werewolves. What was that? That was funny. I mean, that was also very, like, okay. high school student. Is it time that we talk, uh, talk about, about Sam? Sam? Okay. So Sam, who's in high school? 26. Hangs out at a high school, sells drugs. Tells, sells drugs. He's presented as a drug dealer. Yep. Like on one hand, he's presented as an older, lecherous drug dealer who pops cherries right. and is no bueno, right? right. He's no good. Yep. And presumably would kill you over his wheat. Like, you know what I mean? Like, sure. He's, he's presumably a bad guy, right? right? But then everything he does is so selfless. Right, and because she's smart, strange, and because she knows what lycanthrope. His motivations are. are nowhere to be found. Lycanthrope. Well, that's crazy, huh? Book me into the rubber motel. I'm officially all fucked up, right? Uh, doing his best, Christian Slater. Yes, um, very that, very that. And the, he had the hair and all of it. Why does he care? Why is he so invested? 
Because he hit it? He, did he? He hit it with his van. That oh, oh, because right? he hit it with, he hit the, I didn't know if you meant like because he hit it. Oh, no. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't say that. I, I, that makes sense. <laughs> He literally hits the, right. the the first werewolf the first with werewolf. his car. It's eviscerated. Yeah. Oh fuck! He has to clean it up. So he's uh, on board to believe Bridget when you know. She's I guess he's telling curious, him right? And so but then he goes so far. I mean, to the point where spoiler alert: he is killed. He goes so deep into this with her oh. about finding the cure. Let's do some science because he's also cooking meth. Like I was question, I was wondering about that. Like, or he does heroin, or I mean, I guess those are any sort of injectable drug. Is it was very. I'm actually really doing, doing science. Su- I'm really doing it. I'm really actually doing science. It was very. I've got a candle and a needle, some alcohol and some herbs. Yep. A mortar and a pestle. Let's I do this. did love. I was like dying. I was seeing. I, I was, was like, absolutely what? dying. I don't know if you smoke it or eat it or what, but I need to try it now. The dosage would be a guess. I mean, it'd, it'd have to be. There's no way to match for metabolism, body weight. There could be side effects. Yeah, we got this this Michael's herb display that <laughs> mom picked up. Definitely not made of plastic. <laughs> Smells like cinnamon. It's not potpourri. <laughs> I almost think you could lose Halloween Town guys scene where it works. Because it really shouldn't. It really shouldn't. It really shouldn't work. Also, he's a dick. Yeah. I mean, does he deserve to get like a horrible lichen uh, STD where for some reason he has all these pock marks? Yeah, I didn't and... know what that was all about. He has a different reaction than she does. Yeah, maybe because it's just an STD to him. And right, not... he got it He got it venereally as yeah. opposed to... By, 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 by via by... bloodstream. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. The science isn't there. Sam didn't tell us. No. Properly. Different viral (laughs) load? I don't know. I mean, It Follows came out way later, but like It Follows is a horror movie that's like an allegory for STDs essentially. And you have to like give it to the next person to get Mm. rid of it kind of thing. And so that was, you know, playing. I mean, obviously... I don't think it follows this. Well, maybe they're maybe they're sampling maybe they're. ginger snaps, but that was an interesting part of it. Too. It really was. Like it was infecting everyone and everything. It sure. wasn't just her. It wasn't well, just and it wasn't her. just like, you know, so typically you think of it, oh, I got bitten by a werewolf or bitten yeah. by a vampire and we exchange blood, both, I they guess. They do both but, bite. Yes. Still trying to, to make the connection. There's people furiously typing, you idiots, don't you know? <laughs> I don't. The majority of my vampire and werewolf knowledge comes from True Blood. <laughs> so then that means we're also, we have fairies and main ads and... Uh, Wait, were panthers? Were panthers. That yeah. happened. Why? I'm sorry. I was just laughing about when, when Sam was like, because I grow pot, I'm obviously interested in botany. And he's like looking through... <laughs> Like, on his own accord, going to the library and researching, like, plants that might deter lycanthropic, you know, I was like, what is happening with Sam? I, uh, compared homeopathic treatments of infections to the folklore of all this. Take a look. Aconitum dilycotonum. Lyco as in wolf. Right. It's called monkshood. It's a cousin of wolfsbane, except this stuff is safe in small doses. It's a superoxidant, read radical detox. It promotes white blood cell growth. Yeah. Sam seems like he needs a friend. Well, right, I think it, there was an interesting sort of backstory there where we don't know his age. Mm. He could be 15 or 30. I really... I really don't know. I don't know. I would buy either, let's say that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and so it's kind of like, well, where are his parents? I don't know. Right? Did he fall into the the drug selling yeah. in order because he was a big nerd and that was something that he could do? Right. In order Is it to a Breaking by? Bad situation? He had the he had the skills, so he went with it. Yeah. I don't know. He was like, well, I, I'm a nerd who lives alone now. I do know that if he had survived the film, he definitely would have become a meth a, a dealer. Ooh. That's a fact. Maybe. He was on the road. He, he had was the on candles the road. and the syringes. And the you could have a lot chin. of needles for a pot dealer. I'm just like, like you don't need that for pot. No. What is happening? Anyway, what were you gonna say? It just really made me laugh when he was like, no. "You see, <laughs> the lupine the, woodhouse right. flower." I was like, "What the fuck?" What the fuck? Sam, you're too invested. You're too invested. I also love that immediately they're like, "Wait, is this thing that your mom got lupine? Whatever." 
very happenstantial, very, you know, of course, it's a movie. I, d- I liked it. I liked yeah. it a lot. No, but it was interesting to me, going back to the, like, STD of it all. Yeah. It was so funny to me when the guidance counselor, right, they're, like, going through that whole thing of, like, oh, oh but what like, about the hair or whatever? And then she yeah. goes, well, it's yours now, bitch. You yeah. Know, get used to it. Play safe. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Whatever. So, like, interesting that it was, like, okay, here's the tools, right? Oh, yeah. if you'd use the condom. You'll have to protect against both pregnancy and STDs now. Play safe. Halloween Town Boy, it could have saved him if they had used a condom. Maybe, yes. Then I also was kind of like, well, she said she was ovulating, like... Hey, she's ovulating! (laughs) That was funny, too. That was like, don't take drugs! It was very like, she's ovulating! She's ovulating! Don't take drugs! So we know that she was ovulating, and then I was like, are they going to have a little little werewolf werewolf baby? baby? That's the sequel. No, it wasn't. No, they made it. Dead. Maybe in the TV show. Maybe. I love that. Right. I mean, I like the idea. Like, obviously, there's canon of sorts, but I, I think you can really. I think werewolves are pretty loosey goose. You could well, and 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 I think with Ginger Snaps, you could probably take it wherever in a series. It's loosely based off of the original source material. Teen Wolf meets, you know. (laughs) Yeah. You know, um, thirteenth year, right? It's very that. Speaking of, like, that's very gay allegory, the 13th year. Do you remember that movie? I don't think I saw it. Excuse me. You don't know? You're not intimately familiar with the Disney Channel original movie, The 13th Year, where he becomes a merman? No. I thought you were going to say 13 going on 30. No. Wait, isn't that just Luca? Basically, yeah. It's Luca, but wasn't that an allegory for for, him being gay as well? Well, according to the writer-director, no. Okay. It was supposed to be... No! (laughs) No! No. He wanted Luca to be desexualized, right? It was just about friendship and... I mean, obviously, Right, being different was just a thing. It was not supposed to be sexualized or about sexuality. Right. Whereas 13th Year, I think, is a little bit... It's pubescent, so it's like a little bit more like this. (laughs) Oh no, what are these scales? As if growing up weren't hard enough. A month ago, I was completely normal. Imagine having to hide your flippers. Right. Like, what is this thing that's happening to me that right. I don't want to happen or that I, I don't right. want to accept about myself, but I need to I'm learn to accept. I'm not ready to, to exactly. grow up and whatever, yeah. <sighs> What's happening to me? You know, I mean, I haven't seen it in a very long time, but there have been many thought young, pieces written about 13th year. you remembers. Um, well, I remembered enough that then when I saw people talk about it, I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. Um, I was there the whole time. <laughs> I, if only I'd listened. The whole time. I do want to kind of read a few of my favorite lines I, I, I wrote down because oh, they really made most me... Most of them, get... for me, are Mimi Rogers, but yes, continue. Well, I, she had some great lines, but actually I thought... Well, both of the girls had great Everyone lines. Everyone was really great. Yeah, uh, there was one... Oh, Gonads gets a zipper going, right, was a good one. I <laughs> yes. was like, that's a good little zinger. If I'm simping around tampon dispensers whining about PMS, just shoot me. Just shoot me. <laughs> Ugh. It started so strong. I think... This movie was longer than I recall. Yeah. And it gets a little bit bogged down in the middle. Um, slows down. It There's slows a lot down of like, a logistics. Bit. We got to get this chess piece over here so we can get the thing. And I'm like, uh, it could be, I'm okay. It can, we can just pare it down. Just, just ever so. Just a little um, bit. Snap it up. Ginger snap it up a little bit. Ah! Um, I did love, there was a few just like, I don't, I think this must have been intentional, but just like weird sight gags where like, so they're all sitting around having dinner and mm-hmm. well, all the men are, are literally wallpaper. Yeah. I mean, except Sam, I guess, but he's a doormat. I mean, he's like, right. whatever you need. I, uh, yeah. So I'll go to the library and Here, research. Tool. Like Sam has a library card. Cause he went like what, that. You know what I mean? Like what's his life? That tracks. What's Sam's life? I don't know. See, I think, okay. I really like this. I think yeah. for, for whoever's making the TV show here, yes. free ideas. Okay. I think Sam's backstory, I think he could play a role in the show. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I like that they're wallpaper or doormats. Great. But I think I was going to talk about the dad and we'll get there. Oh my God, right? Yeah. We will. (laughs) If if I need to, I'll just leave the gas on. Leave the gas on, light a match. Light a match and we'll just leave. leave. What about about dad? (laughs) 
He's just going to blame me. It's fine. I won't understand. So that I was wondering, is she implying that she's going to murder yeah. him in the house or just leave and desert him? I don't know. Either way, she was like, I'm out. doesn't fucking matter. Nope. <laughs> We're gone. Let's just go. Just we'll start fresh. Just as girls. It'll be fun. What about dad? He'll just blame me. They all will. Yes to this Thelma and Louise, like, let's just get out of Dodge yeah. City and, like, yeah. we're going to go for it and, you know, go on the road. And also kind of like a... As a werewolf. A female werewolf pack. Yes. A, a female werewolf pack. I love that. Alpha female pack. Yes. I love it. They're having dinner. There's a huge ham on yeah. the table. And the dad has a leg of chicken. <laughs> and I just was like... That had to be a choice, right? <laughs> just, it was an enormous ham. And then he's Chicken. like a drumstick. Yep. I was like, what's, what's this, though? I really like it. Good. Oh, but you were saying Sam's backstory. Oh, yeah, so Sam's backstory. I like to imagine that he, you know, his parents have either perhaps tragically died or yeah. eaten by a werewolf. Did he inherit this greenhouse? Um, or is it just an abandoned situation in the woods? Yeah, no, I think it was a it was a greenhouse. Like, his mom liked to farm. Sure. Maybe that's why he got inspired about, like, plants and stuff. Love it. He was a nerd. Right, he liked to go to the library, especially after his parents were gone, and it was like a safe place, safe place for kids free to, place go. to go. Exactly, after go learn things. Mm -hmm. He was a nerd mm -hmm. anyway. He didn't like, he didn't get along with the kids. Yeah. So that's his whole thing. And then he needed to be able to like afford to live and stuff. Sure. So we got into like, oh well, if I sell, if like I can easily Just grow weed in the greenhouse. Weed. Yeah, yeah. What's a new, like? I, maybe he starts with tomatoes, right? Like I'll grow some plants. Yeah. Oh, what's a more valuable plant? Oh. Weed. Right, and then he got a bad reputation. Maybe he grew weed for his mom who had cancer. Okay. And then she died. Yeah. And left him the house. And the weed. And the weed, and now mm -hmm. he knows. He's like, well, I can sell this so that I can live. I don't like that we've turned Sam into the main character. I didn't say he was a main we character. We can read into he it. He just has a backstory. He has a backstory. He can have a backstory because it did make no damn sense. <laughs> no, it didn't. Hey, what's up? 14 year old I'm just going to show up it's cool to talk to you about werewolves <laughs> are you on drugs are you on drugs like right now like right now I'm in class hey what's up look if so for shot I've been reading I got another idea are you on drugs like right now I'm in class here <laughs> really good it was great it was, it was like great lines in yes movie. really great lines oh another line I liked Kel Shocker <laughs> It was, like, there's a reason this movie has found an audience and yes. has a cult following. Like, it's great. Yeah. It's really It's really well written. It really, really well written and interesting. And that's, like, what, like, you know, like, um, gag me with a spoon, you know. It's very quotable. Fuck it, me gently with, with a chainsaw. A chainsaw you, know. you know, like, there's quotes that you can remember and you're like, those are quippy and smart and witty and dark. Almost Diablo Cody-esque. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not quite as precious or over the top but it has that vibe of like somebody with a voice wrote this somebody Absolutely. that like had, had something to say it a, wasn't just a singular voice yes wrote this yes and you can tell you can really tell and that is so nice and it's rare particularly these days yeah I feel like I was reading um best year ever which was this book all about all the movies that came out in 1999 yeah and they were talking about 10 things I hate about you and the two writers of that movie were two women and they wrote like themselves sure. in high school so that's why Kat feels like such a real yep. relatable person and yeah. everyone feels so real and you're like oh my god this isn't just like cookie cutter she's the bitch she's the, just like Ginger was saying like oh they put us into categories right. or whatever yep. like you can really tell when there's thought put into the character when there's like a rounded out person and like their their sibling relationship is really developed and yes. you understand oh, yes. it like yes. the mother daughter relationship yep. is really developed and you understand that the father as I said is perfectly useless you know all He's of those literal things. wallpaper oh yeah. my god look at those fingers oh honey <laughs> they're fake it's part of their thing oh my god <laughs> Henry for Pete's sake it's for the girls death project ah <sighs> Back to Sam in this greenhouse. Oh, yeah. I just love that at a certain point, before I knew there was a party, we cut to him and he's just really decorated the whole place with pumpkins. Just and I was like, like 
Funsies. Oh, you know, just every drug funsies. dealer decorates their yeah. greenhouse with pumpkins. But I think Sam had a lot more going on than we realized. Or his character started as one stereotype at the first maybe. draft and, and then, then ended it, yeah. up as a different stereotype. I don't know. The, yeah. I don't know, but it did make, I guess. Like, don't, couldn't you see a world where the first draft he was like a completely lecherous older yes. drug dealer grosso who they were and then they were like so you took it too far he's a little too irredeemable but that was I mean, a, but and then he dies at the end but right there's vestiges that's... of it like when ginger's like well if he rapes you don't come crying to me right? bye and yeah. you're like <laughs> he rapes you don't come cry i'll be at home Like, this is a real world. You know, this yes. is a dark place. Yes. They well, lived in a dark world. That's you know? true. And everyone talks about him as someone that you would expect. Like, that he would... It but seems none like of that his would actions be... are. It's so no. interesting. And I yeah. don't know if it's intentional. I don't either. If, yeah. they, if they ended up softening it because they felt like it was not working. Right. Or if it was just kind of like, if well, he has a tragic he's a drug story. dealer. And so they paint you in a picture, right? I don't know. I don't interesting. know. Interesting. Interesting. But the final showdown at the end is quite Hitchcockian with all of these sure. angles. And it's very suspenseful. Yeah, and it's stairs. It? Always stairs. Stairs. The Dutch angle stairs and all of this. And we already get the shot. And That's a very Hitchcockian too of like the needle falls under. Oh God. Oh, I can't reach it. Was it was oh. very yeah. that. Yeah. And, um, and Sam's doing his best Joe Morton in Terminator 2 impression as he's dying. It was interesting because I didn't know where it was going to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was like, there's different ways you could take this, right? Oh. She she lands, she attacks her, she lands on it. Oh, I just injected you and now you're back to normal, <sighs> right? Oh my God, we're sisters again. Yeah. That was a crazy close call. I do remember when I first watched it being really invested that she get cured and I hope exactly. they make it out. And yeah. oh my God, like, uh, and this time I was a little bit more like, it's gone pretty far. I don't know if she can come back from this. Yeah, like, you, she's you murdered, murdered a lot, lot, of, people. lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> They're dead. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get out of this pickle. Um, but I still the the, the sisterly bond. Was yeah, no, you strong. want you want there to be a way, but there isn't a way. It's tragic in that way, but yeah. in a satisfying like ooh kind of way, not yeah. a like what. Just fit on the door. Just you could right. both fit on the door. This is annoying. It's not annoying in that way. No. I love that that is maybe one of the most enraging things. That's, that, just, like, that's I, like, just change it. Just yeah. do something else. <laughs> do something I'm else. so mad. Exactly. You could have done anything other than just anything. like, oh, we can't. Just make the door smaller. Just make the door smaller. Some, anything. But anyway. <laughs> It's a satisfying tragedy. Yes. And we leave it open for sequels that then happen. Yeah, I guess interestingly enough, yeah. Well, and, the, and then it was nice too that there was that moment of like sister love where she like crawls up yeah. with this beast. Right. Right? And it was like tender. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It made it more tragic. It was like, oh gosh. I mean, I wish that Mimi could... Rogers really disappeared. They really left oh, fully, her out to dry. It was just like, oh, she was just she's in the, the minivan at the party, being like, where are you? Oh no. Ooh, maybe some weed would be helpful for my nerves. I don't know. I feel like it was one of those movies too that like didn't have a huge budget and and utilized what it needed to and hid the seams where they could yep. and shadows and yes. don't show it until you need to show it and yep. show it pieces and the editing helped and like that's it, they, true. They did a really good job. They re it, it, it never really felt low budget. No. It obviously it was like yeah. you know like you could tell oh this wasn't tons of money yeah but it didn't feel like god this looks really shitty. I do the one thing I do think if it had a better soundtrack mm. it might just move that much better. A better Fair. score. Um, you know, I'm always here for like a John Carpenter, uh, you know, esque score. Or just some poppy songs placed interestingly. I can see that. I feel like 2000, get mad at me, was a bad year for music. Like, it was a music I didn't like. But 99 was a great year for music. 99 was a great year for music. 1999, 2006, best years of those respective decades for music. I can't wait for your book. Yeah, right. But anyway, that, that, not, there was no music that stuck out to me in this. Sure. Um, and so I feel like if you had a couple of tracks, it could... It could have... There could I just, be like forward momentum and it would have more atmosphere or something. Right, yes. It might just solidify it all. And give them a little bit more... Not that they needed more personality, but something. like it still could have just colored in some extra lines. Yeah, even just play some cheesy, you know, Neil Diamond song in Mimi Rogers' minivan. Something, oh they God. probably couldn't afford it, but like, no. you know, something, give well, me right. a and that's what's interesting. music cue jokes, something in there, I don't know. And I almost wonder if there was, I don't know how this movie came out, 
you know, like it if, did very poorly. It was disappeared and then was found right on, through the DVD yeah. wonders. But I would like I wonder if if it went to festivals. Like, did they get festival music rights that originally it had, mm. and then they couldn't pay for for the release? I would be intrigued if there was ever a point where they wanted different music, and mm -hmm. then at some point it got stripped because of rights. Maybe, but. All that is to say, I think this is a great movie, a fun, spooky, it takes place at Halloween. Yes. It doesn't have the most Halloween scenes. I mean, there's the one There's at the, the party, pumpkins at the party. You know, and, and she's like, rrr, rrr, I'm a sexy werewolf. Yeah. Wicked costume, baby. Interesting film. They don't really make them like this often. Often, yeah. And uh, it was a fun revisit. So thanks, Sophie. Yeah, thanks, Sophie. It was um, not my favorite, but I appreciated a lot about it. Yes, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot going on. Yes. Not going to be a staple for your Halloween viewing. No, I don't think I have Halloween viewing. Okay. Hocus Pocus and... and Halloween Town. Halloween Town. Great. Next year. Oh, yes, we're going to do all of them. I'll get my revenge. The revenge of Calabar. <laughs> can we do all three in one episode? Yes, I okay. think we can. I think we can. Okay, okay. Well, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>